of Mars, and this is a Tyranny Watch News Special Field Report, Civil War reenactment in historic Mumford, New York. Now, before we get to the reenactment, which is a little while from now, uh, I want to say it's time to pay for the soup. I don't mean paying me money, that's not what I want, just your attention. So... Uh, what were the causes of the Civil War? We're, we're going to go over this. I think it's important for people to understand that things aren't exactly as they've been taught in our schools. That's an understatement of the year. Uh, now, people say we're facing a Civil War today, possibly. That's all over the Internet. I would disagree. What we have going on here is it's like a Bolshevik revolution going on. Uh, it was actually started by Barack Obama. So this is a left-wing Bolshevik revolution that we're seeing. I don't want to get too much into politics. So, Civil War. Well, you see this shirt that I'm wearing? This was actually part and parcel to the cause of the first Civil War. Now what am I talking about? See, if you look historically, the settlers in the South learned that they could grow crops like cotton and tobacco, but of course they used slaves. But, in the North, the Industrial Revolution was starting. Okay, maybe the reenactment's getting closer than I thought. The Industrial Revolution was starting. Now, I think it was in 1908, the direct African slave trade was banned uh, in the United States. They got around it, of course, by uh, sending the slaves through places like Jamaica and Haiti, what have you. If I'm not mistaken. Now, uh, of course, it didn't work very well in the ban. But what happened was in the North, you see, this was an economic war, as 99% of wars are. I'm looking around to see what's going on while I'm doing this. This was an economic war. I'm going to say that again. This was an economic war. Artifacts! Artifacts! How could you say that? We, uh, us good Christians, uh, we wanted to stop it. It was an atrocious abomination, the slavery was. Well, I may think it's uh, immoral too, but the simple fact of the matter is, if you look at, <laughs> you can look at any 
Civil War battlefield you want. And the truth is that the Christians were on both sides of the battlefield and they both thought that God had their backs. Duh! Both thought they were right. Both thought that God had their backs. You see why I'm an agnostic? Well, anyway. See? The problem was that uh, in the north, they needed semi-skilled labor, which they couldn't get from African slaves. So they had to pay uh, for it. They had to pay for the labor in the south. They didn't have to pay for anything. This created an economic disparity. It's a historical fact. Don't go blaming artifacts. If you're already freaking out. Go change your depends, and because you're going to hear more. Now, I think that was the basic thing right there. Is that they had this economic disparity, and while the history books may say that there was this big. Uh, push towards morality, the doing away with slavery, a lot of that was bullhunk. I'm not saying there weren't church groups and underground railroad and all that. Sure. The real reason was basically uh, basically it was seen industrialism industrialized world couldn't stand up to slave labor. If you read today's uh, news stories and Things, places like China, you'll find out that I'm right. You know, your average iPhone re reader uh, user doesn't realize that they're supporting one of those old slave labor in China. They have these poor kids housed up in these big uh, factories in China, and they really suffer. The you know, average iPhone user don't care about that. Well, that's the way it is. This was an economic war, principally. And nobody will ever can convince me otherwise. And while we're on the subject, I am not a fan of Abraham Lincoln one bit, after some of the things I learned he did. Uh, maybe that's a topic for another day. I'm going to go uh, take a look at the troops, the reenactments about the start, I suspect. Now, anybody gets on their high horse and says, oh, this was a moral cause, don't bother with me, all right? It was economic, more or less. It was economic, principally. Okay, this is the, uh, these are the reenactors. Uh, I didn't expect it to start quite this early, but... Whatever. One thing to note is that the uh, southern folks did not have uh, as good a uniforms as northern ones. The last time I was here, I asked about that. And the reason for that is that they didn't have the manufacturing the north did. A lot of folks don't know that the turning point of the Civil War battle of Gettysburg was fought over shoes. Because the southerners were coming up uh, into Pennsylvania they, wanted sh they needed shoes so they go into uh, Gettysburg try to get them and they were met by the infamous General Meade, who really failed at his job. Yes, he drove him back, but he could have had Lee's army right there, and that would have been the end of the war.
that was a big problem with North. The North had two big problems. One was they didn't have the leadership. Like I said, the infamous General Meade, I forget what his first name was, he let Lee's army go. And that were, they got a response from Abe Lincoln of, is that all? So, that was not a good thing. This war might have ended two years earlier had Meade done his job properly. And the, what we see today with the Bolsheviks, well, American equivalent of Bolsheviks, so they're tearing down all the uh, monuments to the southern generals and such, which I find utterly despicable because it's a part of our history. Whether I like what they stood for or not is irrelevant. It's part of our history. Here's a couple of southern gentlemen on horses. noted that slavery would have been ended by the Industrial Revolution. Well, it's questionable whether it would have or not. But, uh, the Industrial Revolution was in high gear by the time the American Civil War happened. It got set back a little bit by the 1859 Carrington Solar Event, which is something we may be facing here, uh, for too long. But, by and large, that's what it was. It kind of got sucked back by the uh, Carrington Solar Event. If you're not familiar with the Carrington Solar Event, what it did was the sun was in kind of a bad phase, and it, what it does is it pushes Earth's magnetic field. And it induced so much electricity in the uh, telegraph wires that are able to use telegraphs without any batteries or whatever. Just a little historical side note. The, it probably slowed the Civil War down a couple of years, but who knows. Anyway. Like I said, North had the factories which required semi-school labor and they had to pay them. Down South, they didn't have that. It doesn't take much uh, knowledge to pick cotton and tobacco or whatever they did on the plantations. And the plantations were an economic powerhouse. I'm going to try to get a little closer to this. But I need to stand aside because we're going to have a charge by blue coats. Now if you're watching this video, you know I'm a Yankee. But I do have southern blood in me. Probably quarter or something. thing a lot of people don't understand because they're not taught in our messed up schools is that uh, North really did a really bad job on, by bad I mean destructive job on southern cities they didn't have nuclear weapons but they still raised them right to the ground and took them right down the ground they burned them Ooh, perfect. They can't be. The North was good guys. Well, I'm sorry. You ever heard of Reconstruction? I know there are liberals and Christians out there saying that didn't happen, but, uh, sorry. It's a historical fact. We <laughs> destroyed the South. My original hometown is called Elmira. Only well, has the nickname Elmira because of the treatment of the, uh, Southern POWs. And it was really uh, bizarre.
bizarre from what I understand. It's really bad. And it's going to get smoky because I've been to one of these before and I forget whether they use Pyrodex or not. Pyrodex is a replacement for traditional black powder. And it doesn't smoke very much. You fire off a gun with traditional black powder, it really smokes badly. I should have got here earlier. I was too busy drawing, so I'll take what we can get here. So here we have a uh, Union mounted <laughs> cavalry unit, and I'm assuming at some point they'll be attacked by the Southerners, I don't know. Try to zoom in on them. My hypothesis that the Industrial Revolution would have ended slavery is based on the fact that, you know, your shirt I'm wearing is made of cotton. It's all done by with tractors and combines and so forth. Uh, I refuse to, you know, say that somebody owned a slave, but I will say they held slaves and it was actually quite expensive. Uh, machines don't require rights, they don't have feelings, they're just machines. <laughs> well, at least not yeah. and get started and put this on hold. Not much going on right now. Okay, it's other facts from our skin. I just heard the uh, bugle call, which means this is about to start. Okay. 
Lincoln giving some kind of speech. That's an old fashioned box camera. This was before motion cinema. We used to have a box camera at one time. You couldn't get the film for them now. Looks like it was false alarm. Okay. Action commenced. Thank you. 
Okay, I hope you heard the uh, introduction there. Uh, it's about to begin. I'm not seeing any of the rebels right now. I'm sure I will. The southern soldiers headed this way. Once again, the Southerners had the best of generals. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant, his uh, nickname was Useless. How many living dickens he ever got to be president, I don't know. That's a trot! That's a trot! March. And here we go, the uh, blue coat column. It's outnumbered about 20 to 1, but... say that the rebels stumbled upon the column and they got into it. We have another column of blue coats out of this way.
There's a song by uh, the band Sawyer Brown called Another Side, which kind of echoes my sentiments uh, about all this. See, on the real battlefield, you would have seen arms blown off. You would have seen people being stabbed by bayonets. And Thank God this is a reenactment. Okay, our rebel column is swinging behind the others. It's going to get loud here. I'm going to repeat one thing. If this was a real battlefield, there were Christians on both sides, and they both thought God had had their back. Why don't you uh, highfalutin types remember that? Ludifix. It was moral cause. Yeah, both causes were moral. One lost. Duh. That's why I'm an agnostic. Alright, I'll shut up and let them fight. Magnificent.
Okay. Over to my right, we uh, have a band. This was actually a very important battle because it was musicians who communicated orders. They communicate advance, retreat, uh, try to hit them on the flank or whatever. Why how things have changed. In some respects, they stay the same. I mean, modern day mutual musicians, if you can call them that, are communicating to Antifa their orders.
shifts direction toward us. As soon as they start firing off the can, what do you know?
Cooper and uh, military signals, but I think they're signaling retreat. Why well, I said Southerners had two big advances. I mean, disadvantages. The one was their leadership and the other was that they were fighting mostly on their home turf until they went up to Gettysburg to look for shoes. Okay, it looks like blue coats are advancing on the Confederate positions.
Okay, looks like it's kind of winding down. Battlefield is strewn with reenactors. And some rebels continue to fire off the cannons off the left. century boat or a 19th century boat. All the it's all rigged. So these guys think they any stuffed under the cannon? No, no, that's called a Keltrops. That's uh that's a precursor to landmine warfare, but I thought you'd appreciate that because the 15th did that and no one is equal to yet. That's, you should be proud. That's a, those are some serious guys. A Keltrops is a precursor step back a second, I'll show you. Yeah no I know what they are. It's, oh, okay. I wonder yeah. if they ever use them in no, cannon, no. No, it would, a ball coming out of cannon ends your whole day. You know, that's it. You don't need to throw this junk. You know, like stuff it down with the nails and everything else. Nails are only used because they don't have anything. They don't even really shoot nails too often. That's a ship thing. 
That's, a, that's the Navy, because if you don't have anything else, the Navy's got nails because they got to do repairs on the ship. We build almost nothing out of nails. That's kind of where nails. I'm coming from, because yeah. I, I, I was in the Navy. That's where I yeah. was coming from. Yeah. No, the, the, it, um, we, don't, we build next to nothing out of nails. They're too expensive. Everything is pegged, mortars, tenon, stuff like that, dub yeah. joint, stuff like that. It, it's, it's firmer. It's a, if you're a carpenter, you know it's a much better joint. Nails. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, the, this, this kind of stuff is, is, this is called a Keltrops. It's Latin for a crow's foot, and it's a precursor to um, landmine warfare. Whoa, I know what that feels like. Yeah, you don't want to step on it. I appreciate that. Oh, sure, make her pick them up. Yeah, yeah, no, I can. I want, I want to do um, we had blacksmiths with us. Uh, even back then, the, uh, the army contracted um, contracted outside civilian help. And the idea of that is not really to have you step on it, because if you step on it, you'll swear at me. You'll you'll pull it out of your foot. You maybe you'll get tetanus, but probably not. Um, afterwards, I'd rather see a horse step on it, because if I can lame a horse or an ox, I, I stop the wagon. It's pulling, and if I stop the wagon, it's pulling. I stop the 10 or 12, or th there's a 13 mile long wagon train behind the Army of the Potomac. If I stop the first couple wagons, I stop the whole army. It's considered very dirty pool. It's considered low life warfare, and if I'm caught and I have those on me, I'm never gonna see a prison camp. They're gonna off me for fighting dirty pool. Um, so that, yeah, that's the nature of that. This is the granddaddy. This is meant really to split away a wheel. Because even if, if I'm, got this in the, in the, you know, on the ground, even if the wheel doesn't hit it directly, it rolls into the wheel, splits the metal off of the wood, breaks the wheel, I still got my traffic jam. And if you see a couple of these, they don't know if you laid one, two, or two hundred. So the Army has to stop and start looking around for them. Pick them up quick and keep going on. Picking them up quick, that's where the game of jacks comes from. How quick you can pick them up. Yeah. So even if they only did like five, they would... it's kind of like the, the old prank where you let go three greased pigs, numbers one, two, and four. And now someone's going to spend some time looking for number three. Uh -huh. Well, that's the idea. I could lay down two. I could lay down one. They don't know, and it still slows down the army. It's all about speed. The same with the um, the Shavota Free over there. The gentleman with the straw hats pointing out. That's an anti-cavalry measure. Cavalry's big advantage on the battlefield is speed. They can get where I don't want them faster than I can react. So how do you counter the speed? Slow them down, but make them put on the brakes. Horses won't uh, charge through the pointy spikes. So even if a human's spurring them on, they're going to stop. And if I get you get I get you to get off the horse, I've already accomplished two things. I stopped the cavalry, slowed you down. Now I'm reacting because you're not going to sneak up on anybody on a horse. And the other end of that is if you get off to move those, because they're easily movable, I'm going to have a guy shoot you. Now, if I'm hiding in the woods, they don't know if it's me or grease pig number two, or the, you get the idea. And again, they have to, and I've, again, slowed them down. Nothing, nothing, no battlefield obstacle anywhere, or the engineers. It is our thing. Nothing is impassable. Nothing is insurmountable. All, the whole catch of battlefield fortifications and obstacles is if I can get you either to go somewhere you don't want to be to avoid them or to make you pay a price you're unwilling to pay to go through them. Because you're going to get through them. They proved it with the Maginot Line, the Siegfried Line, the trenches of World War I, the trenches of the Civil War. If you're willing to pay, you will beat it. But can you pay? You know? I'm interested in what these, Please. these were used for. These are, these are survey tools. This is called an engineer's chain, and this is called a half gunter's chain. And they're dragged out by two guys, and is using a straight, you know, keeping them straight. This is 33 feet, a full chain would be 66. And a half a chain of this is called a rod, as in two rod road, three rod road. And it's a, it's a distance measurement. These measure distance. The tool behind me right there is called a Y level. Um, some people mistakenly refer to it as a transit on the tripod, right by the gentleman in blue. One gentleman is looking through the scope on that. It's got crossed hairs. The other gentleman is going to hold the pole that's laying on the ground. The gentleman looking through the crosshairs is going to say, go a little left, go a little right, go a little left, put your pole down. Dead straight. Now I have the guys with the chains, two man the chain, out to the pole. One 33 foot measure. Every bit of New York State has been measured like this. Every county line, every state line. If you're familiar with Transit Road, 
There's a reason they call it Transit Road. Um, it's, it is why it's going so straight for so long. It was done with the transit. Your property lines were done with these originally. Um, if you look at your search and survey, you'll see, it, it, you know, it goes back, you know, 150 years to the Holland Land Company. All done with this. I'm sorry. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give you a cigarette. You're a little <laughs> you have any uh, words of wit and wisdom about Stoneman? That's my cigar. Back off. Get your old cigar. You have any words of uh, wit and wisdom about Stoneman destroying the tracks into uh, Richmond? Uh, what would you like to know? I, I, I'm not mostly a railroad guy, but thank I, you for everything. my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for Neither coming out. I. Take care, guys. Right up. Oh, super! I like it. Okay, we're going to take a look at a couple of cats. What I was referring to is that I think it was a colonel, his name was Stoneman, he uh, destroyed the railroad track into uh, Richmond. I don't know that much about it. Learned about it from a song and looked it up. So there go the blue coats. Well, basically what they did was, if they bit it off, they bit off the bullet. Okay, in their mouth, then they pour the powder in, and then they kind of spit the bullet in and push it down. Technically, on horseback, for me, you have a breech loader and you have a muzzle loader. This is a muzzle loader. If you notice, when I was doing it on horseback, I have to hold it way down here. But I'm holding it with my left hand. So, I can actually walk around like this on horseback. I can load. I can load while moving around. Anyway, I still have control of the horse. So you hold it down here, and you bring it. And I just usually, you know, just to make sure you can go like that. See, the thing is, the way he's trained, get your head up. Hey. No, no. Don't call him. Hey. Get your head up. He knows not to go anywhere, you know. But he will stand. He will stand like this now. I can fire, load, fire, yeah. and yeah. he can just stand there. That's amazing. Yeah, there's. Well, it wasn't later on that came things out. on the side that kind of curl off on his. That's the bit. Oh, yeah. what's the leather or the bit? No, it's just leather. Yeah, it's, it's just the leather. leather. It's, leather. it's, it's leather. got twenty something years of use of getting wet, okay. dry, yeah. wet, oiled, wet, oiled, dry, okay. wet, oiled. <laughs> Isn't he magnificent? <laughs> and the guy writing him works for me too. Well done. Yes, yes, we had sharps. Yeah, they had sharps too. Yeah. Just the breastplate. Just the breastplate. Yeah. This involved. If, if I start going up the hill, the slap will the slap slide backwards. This keeps it from sliding too far. Oh, That's why you have okay. it. Okay, there you go. And it doesn't wear down the shoulders this time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh a lot going up. Do you like this breeze, huh? Do you like this? He said, yes, I do. Go back and get some food. Okay. Thank Stay for the afternoon you. battle and be there to watch it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, thank you. Is there a difference? I think we flip the sides. Enjoy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you guys look fantastic. Thanks. Hey, Rich! Way to go, guys. Mars cutting in. Uh, on a somewhat personal note, there's a song that's often 
uh, considered to be a racist song. I want to clear up the misconception on it. The song is called the Dixie Song. That's not a racist song. First of all, it was written in the 1940s, and secondly, it was written by some Yankee in, from Ohio. It's considered to be just a general celebration of the South. It had nothing to do with the Civil War. As you get the usual frantic people with hair standing on the, ends of their, uh, on the side of their head, on top of their head. Ah, it's racist, it's racist! Mm, sorry. It's a historical song, but it's not. Had nothing to do with racism. It's called Dixie Song, you can find it anywhere. So you like to know that. I might stay for the uh, second reenactment, I don't know. We'll see. And that's all. Various engineer tools from a completely different era. And for the record, I have little love of GPS. And if you wanted to, I believe if you wanted to shoot a particular azimuth, uh, you could line it up with the outside ring. The inside ring would tell you your true north using two different uh, scales. The azimuth degrees on the outside. It's like it's like with a modern day. Uh, you yeah, you go like this. Yeah, and you would shoot your azimuth on the direction you wanted to go, but you always wanted to know where true north was, what it was based on, to, to orient yourself. I don't know if you saw on your map, there's like a little thing that pops it off. Especially big pops. Yes, but he's videotaping everything. Chain of links. Yeah, Gunter chain or military chain. Different links depending on uh, which one you're going to use. The cabinet for a case series composition was used to the camps and the streets and the camera. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, A lot of these tents, they appear to be selling authentic uh, antiques, relics of the area, and other stuff. I'm looking for the Civil War tents, the uh, ones where the soldiers are, but so far I haven't found much. Okay, I'm down in the village, and we're going to take a look at some of the uh, tents down here. One problem they had back in Civil War is their main aesthetic was the substance called ether. The problem is, if you got a cigarette near it, you blew up, because ether is an explosive. I would guess that we learned a lot about tri triage from this horrible, tragic war. Okay, what you're seeing here apparently is how medicine was done. Looks like an IV in a soldier. So, like I 
face and ears would be covered. Anything glass that showed in the reflection would be covered. And what is the significance of the Again, well, they're superstitious. Uh, that was a lead lined coffin. So, and whenever they put him in the ground, uh, they, they took that lead lining and they sealed, put another sheet of lead on the top of that, and they soldered it close. So they, they kept the mold, they mold the mildew, the moisture out of there, which preserved the body. So they canned him anyway. Yeah, there you go. That's another way of putting it. Yes. So that's why when they cut him out to look at him, when they cut that hole in there to look at, in the future, that's why he looks so good uh, in the future, is because they kept the mold away from him. And why did they, what would they want to verify? Why did they want to verify? There was Okay. Judging from blue coats I'm seeing, I would say that this is a blue coat uh, uh, encampment. Remember when I say uh, blue coats and rebels? These are all reenactors from all other countries. This is this is now that was then. That's just for the reenactment thing. Hoping to do a YouTube video. up close